Hey everyone, it's been a really long time since I've done one of these shows. Um, lots been going on in my life. Um, I, I'm kind of uh, on the rocks as far as my living situation at this moment. Um, some other things have been happening too, some good things. So those are stories for another time though. Um, uh, I'm, I understand I'm not the most consistent podcaster to say the least. Um, but that aside, you know, I, with everything that's been going on lately, I just felt I had to do this video because things are getting really serious and I wanted to give my two cents on it, where we could be heading and what could potentially be done about it. Because let's face it right now, the Republican Party, uh, the extremist elements in the Republican Party are basically winning at this point. The Republicans will definitely take back the House. Uh, the only saving grace here is that the Democrats are poised to pick up a couple seats in the Senate. But still, this two-party duopoly is killing us all. It really is. But ultimately, that's going to be nothing compared to what happens if the Republican Party and the extremist elements within them get their wish in the end. And recently, of course, Steve Bannon, even though he's going to be spending four months in prison, I think he deserves way more than that. But he wants a, con a total constitutional rewrite of the, of the Constitution, right? He wants to make it so that we are a Christo-fascist anarcho-capitalist country by constitutional mandate. So he essentially wants to use the Constitution to limit the government to where it's basically non-existent because he personally hates the government. So what his beef is with the government, I honestly don't know. And at this point, I really don't care. This guy's dangerous. He's been calling for shock troops. He's using Nazi language to say, you know, we need to basically eradicate all our political enemies. That's what he's saying. You have Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's ramping up the anti-Semitic tropes, and all, among other things. The far right's been attacking LGBTQ people left and right. I mean, that's what the Nazis did. These people are the American iteration of the Nazis. We can't deny it any longer. And if they get their way, which it looks like they very well could if we don't start organizing and fighting back effectively, then we will end up, you know, from the look of things, it could be like a combination of Nazi Germany... Uh, oligarchy Russia, like it exists right now, a bit of North Korea, and of course Saudi Arabia, only you replace Islam with Christianity. That looks like where we're heading if the Republicans get their way. And with the anti-abortion laws that are popping up all over the place, we see horror stories involving pregnancies that simply just won't be able to come to term for whatever reason. And these Republicans are saying, now nah, we're pro-life and you should carry the baby to term, it's the will of God, and you're sinning if you're murdering if you kill the baby. And it's, what the hell are these people on? Well, look, let's be real here. These anti-abortion guys, they're just a bunch of guys who have trouble getting laid. And they're taking it out on the rest of society by imposing these laws on them. And especially in Texas, you know, they want to, uh, they, they put this little bounty program in place where it's like, you can spy on your neighbors and you can turn them in for a reward if they're having sex the wrong way. Or you suspect they might get an abortion and murdering the babies like the livers like to do Oh, these people just, they make me sick. But there's no reasoning with them. Let's face it. There's no reasoning with these people. And um, they are dangerous. Make no mistake about it. They are dangerous. Roughly 30% of the country has lost its fucking mind. And if we don't do something, and I honestly don't know what that something could be right now. So, yeah, I'm going to talk in that respect, right? But we're lost right now. The rest of the American people are just fucking lost. They don't know what to do. But the right, the far right, has been planning all this for decades. That's why it looks like they're just, you know, coasting along and getting their way all the time. They're capturing all these offices at the local levels. They're on track to capture the House. And now we, get, we hear that uh, Trump might be choosing Marjorie Taylor Greene as his running mate in 2024. No surprise there. But if they were to win, holy fucking shitballs, we would be totally screwed. And then it might be a good idea to go, all right, all right, now may be a good time to talk about a national divorce, like Marjorie Taylor Greene said. That may have been the only halfway decent thing she ever said. And I can see it happening. You know, the United States is so divided on a fundamental level at this point that it's like, you know what? It, it, we're like in a, in a toxic relationship with one another right now. And maybe what we need is a trial separation. Sort of like what some couples do when they've been around each other for so long and they, they're kind of like fed up with each other's quirks and idiosyncrasies or stubbornness or whatever it is. And they're like, okay, honey, let's take a break. You know, let's see what happens. Maybe that's what we need to do. It might be the best thing to do to avoid war. 
it would just be really difficult because it's so spread out over this whole country what, what demographics are where. But policy issue by policy issue, you find that most Americans are actually progressive. And the thing about the extreme right is they want to craft this whole country with a constitutional rewrite capturing every single office. Uh, they want to turn it into a Christian theocracy with a rigidly authoritarian infrastructure where the dear, lead, dear leader has ultimate say. And they want the police to be not just policing low-level crime and letting the rich get away with everything. They want them to be the morality police. And that's the Saudi Arabia element, right? And they're totally fine with, like, rich people rubbing each other's shoulders and scratching each other's backs and the poor just like, whatever, man. If you don't have money, if you don't have status, if you don't have standing in society, you don't matter. You can piss off and die for all we care. That's the far right. And not only that, what's happening at the southern border and has been going on for years now, that's nothing compared to what's coming if these right-wing extremists get their way. There would be another holocaust happening in this country, and they would make sure people on the left, LGBTQ people, immigrants, minorities, anybody they don't like, would be rounded up, sent to camps, uh, systematically executed, or you might even have a more uh, Rwandan approach, if you know what I mean. Anybody who knows about the Rwandan genocide where they just picked up their guns out of pure anger and just murdered their opponents in the street at lightning speed. That might happen too. So we're, we're headed for a dangerous place right now. Um, I don't know where ultimately where it will end up, but right now it looks like the far right will ultimately get everything they want in the end because the center is just lost in the woods, doesn't know what the fuck to do. The left is too busy sniping itself over little trivial issues. And meanwhile, the right is so united on most fronts, usually on economic fronts, because these people are diehard capitalists. They believe that money is their birthright. They believe that there should be no taxes, there should be no government. And we all see what happens when that type of libertarian ideal is put into practice. Everything collapses. Everything becomes too expensive. And people have a, hard, have a much harder time uh, meeting their basic needs as a result of that. So... That ain't going to work, but you can't have all your all the money made in society going to a government to provide services. No, because you're still putting all the say so in the hands of very few people. So you you know Jesse Ventura said it uh, on a uh, about a month or two ago, about a month and a half ago maybe, on an, an edition of Crystal Kyle and Friends, where he said you know you can't be a hundred percent socialist, you can't be a hundred percent capitalist. You got to have a mix of both. He's absolutely right. You do. And finding that balance based on what works for your society is very, very important. But that takes both sides actually listening to each other. And the Democrats and Republicans are beyond listening to each other at this point. So ranked choice voting is one of the only things that would truly save what's left of democracy right now and push it in a better direction. To the, you know, Take a look at Washington, D.C. They just implemented it. New York City just, just did it. The state of Maine's had it for a few cycles now. Alaska just implemented it. It's growing. Ranked choice voting is growing, so that's the one positive thing coming out of all of this. But still, it may not be enough to stop the Republican takeover. And once that happens, what do we do? What can we do? I think it's time that we started talking about, okay, how can we split the country up and make sure that, you know, when the right-wingers get their way, that uh, the, the people who don't agree with them can have their own little section and so on and so forth, we'll have to provide safe passage for everybody to go to wherever they agree with. That might, I know, I know it's extreme, but you know what? If it avoids war, if it means everybody else is going to be is going to be happier and and just not at each other's throats as a result of that, then maybe that's what's best. But even if we did that, we'd still be faced with corporate corruption, you know, with corporations running everything. So that's where we have to draw the line there and be like, okay, you corporations existing wherever the left-wing uh, society is, we're going to have to go, all right, you corporations now, you're going to have to either live by our rules or you can, or you can leave, but you're going to hand over the means of production and, uh, you know, the, uh, the um, you know, the, what am I trying to say here? You know, all the contracts and things and all the, uh, the trading back and forth with other companies that exist in the area. Just all the, all the operation, operational measures. You hand all that over to the workers in that area. To the, to the workers in the various stores, offices, factories, uh, farms, what the heck ever you've got. 
and just go ahead, go seek greener pastures elsewhere, but at least leave these workers to have their job security, whatever endeavor they might want to do after you leave. And you can help them transition, still make a little profit on the way out, and uh, make it so that they're okay when you leave. Okay? It's a transitional practice. So that's one thing you can do. Um, uh, right? Honestly, our, our, the U.S. government right now, we all know it's beyond repair. We all know it's not going to represent the people ever, 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 ever. Anybody who does get into government who represents the people is just going to be made to, you know, look silly. They're going to be chastised. They're going to be tarred and feathered. They're going to be made a public example of in so many different ways. They're going to be censured. They're going to be silenced, whatever. Uh, this government is beyond, beyond anything that I recognize or anybody would recognize at this point. It's essentially just a big corporate board of directors, you know, the national board of directors for corporate America and the billionaire class. So the people need their own government at this point. We need a people's parliament. I've said that before. We need to incorporate all disenfranchised parties. Uh, we need to have, I think, much more of a parliamentary approach, save for how we elect our executive. You know, I don't think the majority in parliament should be allowed to elect the executive in the event they resign or die or whatever. I think that I think we should still hold a special election if that were to happen. Um, but we should include everybody, and we should have ranked choice voting across the board. That's the one thing we should do, and we need our own constitution at this point—a people's constitution—and we need to outlaw corruption and treat it like one of the worst crimes imaginable. Maximum prison sentence, maximum penalty for corruption. Um, we need to have a new prison system that is geared toward rehabilitation and re, kind of rehumanizing people after they've been subjected to the capitalist machine for so long, because capitalism ultimately, uh, it dehumanizes people. Capitalism is simply a game of numbers, and all it does is it reduces everybody to numbers. And when everybody sees each other as numbers, when they see the world as numbers, everything around them as numbers, there's no humanity, there's no emotion, there's no connection. And so it's just a hollow and empty and unfulfilling way to live. Money should be treated as what it really is, just a, a, a medium, a medium of exchange and nothing more. But in this country so far, with capitalist countries, they de in this country particularly, we've deified money. You know, capitalism is the religion. Money is like the Holy Grail or the pages of the Bible. And the business community, the CEOs, the shareholders, the, the government at this point, they're all the gatekeepers. They're all the clergy of this religion. And it's not that surprising when you think about it, you know, if you know the story of the Catholic Church and the Illuminati, who were basically the scientists and intellectuals of that time, the church always tried to make violent public examples out of these people. Well, what do you think the government does when they see people trying to consolidate in, in unity and have their own kind of way of living outside of the capitalist infrastructure? They use state violence. And they say, oh, we're spreading freedom and democracy, when the truth is exactly the opposite. They're imposing authoritarian rule, and they're taking away democracy, because Democracy is capitalism's bane, you know. It is the one thing that can keep capitalist greed in check. So just some things to think about here, guys. I, again, I know it's been a long time. Um, I know I've been rambling a little bit here, but um, with everything going on, I felt I just had to do this video, and um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope, I hope this gives you something to think about, and uh, we'll see what the future holds.